5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Seer Eric Bell, the senior pastor of New Life International Ministries, 1985 Vineville Avenue, right here in the great city of Macon, Georgia. And we are excited to be on again tonight for the Hour of Power Bible Study. All right, we thank God for allowing us to come back together again and praise God for each of you. Uh, we're excited again for to come together for another Bible study. I hope and pray uh, whatever difficulties we were having last week, we don't have this time uh, for our Bible study. But we're just again, again, we're just excited to be back on tonight. And praise God for each of you that are coming in. I hope and pray that you're having a, a blessed week. Hey, Sister Benjo, how you doing? Can you hear me fine? Let me know. Uh, is everything coming in clear? Are uh, we having any problems? Can you hear me? All right, Sister Benjo, thank God for you. All right, and everyone that is coming in tonight, uh, I am so excited to be back again for this, I always call our midweek fuel, uh, our hour of power Bible study. And again, I praise God for each of you that are tuning in. Okay, thank you, coming in clear. All right, thank you, Sister Benjo. I hope and pray again that you're having a good day. All my family and friends of New Life that are coming in. Hey, Elder Pat, how you doing? Good to see you. Tell Deke, I hope Deke listening. <laughs> I'm just glad to be back on tonight to uh, get a chance to share with you all in word. Uh, something that the Lord has laid in my spirit again in this time of uh, fasting and praying and hey elder sean how are you tonight good to see you all right i know you had a crazy day at work but you hang in there stay focused amen you equipped for it uh yeah he's on all right good good I'm glad everyone is coming in tonight uh hope we don't have any problems logging on tonight as we did last week i know we had a lot of problems a lot of resistance last week but I believe everything should be good this week. Uh, hope and pray. Uh, again, hey, we're just excited to be back. And I want to invite you to come be with us tonight. I'm um, sorry, on um, Sunday at the uh, our live worship. If you're not too busy, you're not doing anything, if you feel comfortable. And I want to encourage everyone to, uh, those who, who haven't, go ahead and get your COVID shot. Do your research. Um, um, you know, whatever research you need to do uh, that you, that'll make you comfortable, go ahead and check it out. But I encourage you to, as the leader, to get your COVID shot. All right. Hey, Sister Dot. Uh-oh, Deacon Larry. Oh, hey, Deacon. I'll call you later on. <laughs> Uh, I do I encourage you all to get your COVID shot. Uh, I, 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 look, I look at it like this. When I go to the pharmacy uh, and I tell them what prescription I want, I take that, that medicine, whatever's in that bottle, I take it with confidence, not knowing really what's in that bottle. I think that I know what's in the bottle based upon what I requested, but at the end of the day, I don't know what's in that bottle. So, so I look at it like that. So get that COVID shot. You don't know what you're putting in your body when you go to the pharmacy. You believe that they're putting uh, what they're, uh, what's prescribed, and you don't even know what's in the medication that that uh, that they're putting in the bottle. In the bottle. Say, I encourage you all. Hey, Sister Darlene, I see you out of town again. Lord, help you, help her, Darlene. Help her, help her, Jesus. Amen. So again, I encourage you all to get your COVID shot. Uh, get your COVID shot. Um, so do me a favor, everyone. Go ahead and, and start tagging, tag people. Um, I'll start tagging people, and uh, let's go on and get our numbers up. Tag family and friends, church members. Let's go ahead and tag them, and uh, let's get ready tonight because there is a word from the Lord. I'm telling you, there's a word. God has a word. There is a word. Um, so hey, and don't forget, hey, we, we remember we started the New Life School of Theology. We're a site. Uh, a campus site 
for New Life School of Theology out of Coral Gables, Florida, where the president is Bishop Andy Luter. Amen is a Ford accredited university uh, where you can matriculate and get education uh, in, in the school of uh, in the area of theology. So I encourage you all, don't forget, we, we are now satellite campus. We are offering a certificate, an accredited. Now that's the key word, an accredited. Hey, Sister Sandra, how you doing? Good to see you tonight. All right, all right. Good to see you all. All right, Brother Lennon, good to see you all. Um, uh, we are, it's like, that, that's the key. You don't want to waste your time. You don't want to waste your time. Your time is precious. So we will, uh, it is accredited. So we will be offering a certificate of, of completion uh, in, the, in the area of theology. So I encourage you, come on, get it. It's 10 hours. It's a 10 hour course that we're going to be, uh, that we're going to be offering. Our spring semester starts June 4th and 5th. Uh, it's only $25, people. $25. That's it. It's only $25. So come on. Connect with us. I'm telling you, these courses would uh, cost you a thousand, two thousand, fifteen hundred dollars to be exact. But I'm uh, able to get them for twenty five dollars. So I encourage you all to come on with us. Hey, what's up, good brother? Good brother, Pastor Gil Mack. Bless you, man. One of my fraternity brothers up there. He's still looking forward to coming up there, being with you, man. Hey, man. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I appreciate. It. We got about one. We got one more minute. And then we're going to get started. Hey, Pastor Butler, good to have you on tonight. Praise God for you. You've been so supportive uh, of us on our Bible studies, and I appreciate you. Pray all is well there in your ministry in South Georgia. Uh, amen. I pray for you more than you can imagine. Uh, that is my responsibility as an overseer, uh, my apostolic responsibility. Pray for pastors, leadership, cover. Amen. All right. Hey, Elderwood, good to see you. All right. Y'all do me a favor. Go ahead. No longer can we do watch parties. They cut, well, Facebook cut watch parties out. So what I encourage you to do is go ahead and share the Bible study and tag people. Uh, tag New Life, New Life Church members. You see some members that are not on. Go ahead and tag them. Um, let them know that we're on. Uh, and I hope and pray that y'all hear me. Everything is good. I know we had some problems last week. Several members said they could not get on. So I'm, I'm thinking that everything should be good tonight. Uh, hey, Sister Pat, how you doing? Good to see you. Praise God for you. And again, I pray that you all are having a blessed, blessed, uh, blessed week. Um, listen, hey, let's go to work. I'm ready. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Let's go to work tonight. Um, in my time of prayer, uh, and meditation, you know that that's I love to pray. That's my thing now. Uh, God speaks to me in in in, in uh, different variable variable variations of different variable times, um, and He's really been speaking with me, dealing with, uh, on different areas. As we all know, I always start out. Uh, for about a little year now, we've been talking about revival, and we're seeing the revival. I don't know if you all been watching the news, but even on CBS, they're saying here um, that. Uh, uh, that history is happening, even with our weather. Uh, in April, now we're getting winter light -like weather. Uh, it's snowing in Columbus, oh, in Ohio. It's snowing in Ohio. Uh, we're getting winter weather in April, in this late April. And they they say it on the news that this is his history. This is historical. This is not. This is not rare. Something is going on. Uh, you, we all know what's happening. We all know what's happening. Uh, interesting, I was reading another article after the uh, uh, the uh, funeral of, of Prince uh, there the uh, other week in, in the United Kingdom. They said it snowed. Uh, it's, uh, I'm telling y'all, it's happening. It is happening. I'm telling you all, it's happening. So we're in the midst of... Uh, of revival, not a church service, but an outpouring, a moving of God, a moving of God that in, in the earth realm, in the earth realm, we are, uh, we are, and the thing about it, the Lord, he keeps saying this to me, that we, and I, and I need for y'all to hear me, we are a part of this revival. We are, we are directly correlated with the move of God, the outpouring of the spirit. He's using us as his vessels, as his instrument in this mass outpouring. This is why uh, he said, I've catapulted, I've released you from the quiver. We're being catapulted uh, through dimension. We're no longer in levels. We're beyond that. We're, we're going from dimension to dimension so fast 
so fast, so fast. We're moving at rapid pace, uh, pace rather. Uh, 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 and, and, and it's going. This is why he's he's wanting us to get to the understanding of knowing who we are in the spirit. I need to know you in the spirit. So often we have known each other in the flesh, but God is now saying, know one another in the spirit. And we got to know first who we are in the spirit. This is so important that we know who we are in the spirit. Amen. And so uh, last week uh, uh, we talked about strength. He talked about power and he, and he talked about strength and he talked about, I'm sorry, we, last week we talked about flow, how to flow. Now check this out. Here it is. Here we go. Let's work. Tonight, he said this, after you learn flow, uh, he talked to us about flowing and flow, all of that strength and power as we are in this. Now he said this, uh oh, here we go. Now he said, we must have structure. Oh God, hear me. Are you hearing me? He's saying, watch this. We must have structure. We can't be anointed with all of this power in the end time revival, in this revival, miracle signs and wonders, and we don't have the proper structure. Oh God, are you hearing me? So God released this. He said, tell my people, I'm bringing structure in their life. I'm bringing structure in every area of their lives. And you've got to get this. Oh God, I thank you. I feel the anointing. Structure. Because watch this. How are you going to flow without the proper structure in your anointing? As God is developing you, he's sharpening you. You're starting to walk in this power in your anointing. Uh, you're walking in the dimension of it. But now the Lord said, here's a thing that many aren't discussing, but it's very important. Structure. We've got to be structured. We've got to have the proper structure for our anointing. No longer can we be chaotic. No longer can we just be at, uh, any kind of way in our operation in, in the power, in our anointing. So God now is saying structure. I need for y'all to type this in for me. Structure, structure, structure. God, bring structure. Bring the necessary structure in my life. Bring structure in my, in my, in my flesh, in my spirit. Uh -huh. So oftentimes, we just want structure from one dimension. But the Lord said, no, we've got to have structure in our spirit. We've got to be strict because a lot of times we have a lot of wild, anointed people. And God said, it's not going to work now. That's not going to work in this dimension. We have to be structured. We've got to have structure now. And now a lot of times, watch this, structure hurts when you are accustomed to operating without structure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Structure can be challenging and it can be uncomfortable especially when God is putting a demand on us to bring the proper structure in our lives. And oftentimes it can feel uncomfortable. It, it will feel challenging because we, especially when we have been structured to do what we want to do, and God said, no, 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 no. Now it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about him. And he's saying that we've got to have the proper structure in our lives. So he's bringing structure in, in our lives. He said, I can't even give you uh, uh, the full manifestation of the blessing. Are you hearing me? Uh, hey, uh, uh, Sister Markella, the full manifestation of it requires the proper structure. Because if you don't have the structure, what you don't bring structure to will do one or two things. You will either lose it or it will crush you. Are you hearing me? If you don't bring structure, the proper structure, you will either lose it or it will crush you because structure is the demand on the rec or the prerequisite for the fullness of what you're praying for. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, God. Uh-huh. Oh, here we go. We for the work. <laughs> I feel it anointed. We're about to work. Uh, that what you're seeking for, watch this. God said what you're seeking for Require structure. What you're seeking for requires the structure that is not currently in your life. Oh, oh God, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Structure. This is 
mandatory, says God, that we have the proper structure. I know it feels uncomfortable. I know it's challenging. I know, hey, believe me, trust me, I know it's hitting me too. But if we're going to walk in that level, in that dimension, in the fullness of it, it's going to require the proper structure. I can't say what I want to say anymore. I can't operate the way that I want to operate anymore. I can't do it the way that I want to do it anymore. It requires the proper structure. And God said, oh, I know, yeah, 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 I'm bringing structure in your life. I'm going to chisel you. I am going to keep messing, troubling your spirit to, for the necessary structure, not to hurt you or kill you, but to properly place you so that you can get the farm. Aren't you tired of intermittent? Oh, is there anybody on here besides me that you're tired of intermittent? Oh, drop here, drop here, going, 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 going good. Then all of a sudden it stops. And, uh -huh. and the breaking is because there's not the proper structure is not in the area that it where it is causing intermittence. Because God said, I in this thing right now, uh, you're supposed to be flowing. It should not be intermittent. The intermittent is because of the lack of structure in certain areas. And God is bringing the proper structure. Now, let's look at this. Let's look at the definition of structure. That's not going to work now. Here it is. Check this out. This is what structure means according to Webster. To give form or arrangement to. To give form or arrangement to. Think about this. Go back to Genesis 1. When he said, and, the, uh, and God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. Before God could do anything else, he brought structure. God Almighty. Some of you all want light before structure. Some of you all want the trees before structure. Some of you all want the water before structure. And God said, listen, when you re research me, when you research my order, when you research how I do things, I did not bring war. I did not bring the trees and the grass and the animals before I brought the proper structure. Structure had to be in place before I put other things in place. Are you hearing me? So the Lord said, and, and, and when you look at the beginning, the, the earth, it was the earth. It was still labeled as the earth, but it was without form or void. In other words, it was in chaos. And God, oh God, thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, I've got, to, I've got to bring order to your chaos. Oh man, are you hearing me? I'm helping somebody tonight. He said this, I must bring order to your chaos before the fullness can manifest. And what he's doing now, he's bringing, I know it don't feel good, I know it's challenging, and you're like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. Yes, this is essential. He's bringing order to your chaotic self. Oh God, are you hearing me? That goes for me too. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's bringing structure to your chaos. Yeah, yeah. He's bringing, and it goes down, uh, and, it, and it's not just necessarily physical. It's not necessarily, he's bringing structure to your thinking. He's bringing structure to your mouth, to your attitude. God brings structure to my attitude because my attitude, if, if he doesn't bring the structure, your attitude will kill your anointing. Your attitude will kill your influence. So he said, I got to bring the structure to your attitude. I'm bringing structure to your attitude. I'm bringing structure to your sharp tongue. Because how are you going to release my word, watch this, and turn around and kill my word with your mouth? So I got to bring structure to your mouth. I got to bring structure to your mind. Are you hearing me? Uh huh. I got to bring structure to your mind. So God is bringing the necessary structure that is needed in this dimension. Oh God, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Mm-hmm. Are you hearing me? Uh-huh. So I said, uh, structure means to give form or arrangement to the manner in which the elements of anything 
or organized or interrelated. Let me say that again. Structure. The manner in which the elements of anything are organized or interrelated. The reason why you can't give birth because you don't have the structure for birth. God, oh, some of you have been carrying it too long. You've been pregnant too long. You've been, matter of fact, it, 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 it's starting to warp on the inside of you. You've been pregnant too long. You've been carrying it too long. Why aren't you birthing? Because you don't uh, have the structure to birth. Mm. And, and, and watch this. And God said, I will not have you birth something that you don't have the structure to sustain. God, are you hearing me? I'm not going to allow you to birth something that you don't have the structure to sustain. Are you hearing me? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow you to birth something that you don't have the structure to sustain. Are you hearing me? Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is important. Structure, especially, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but especially as a race, the African-American race, we are so accustomed to being and just doing anything, any kind of way, however we want to do it. And God saying that is not how, that we're supposed to, if, if you're professing to have, to operate in the kingly anointing, the kingly anointing has a kingly structure. You can't be an eagle with the structure of a buzzard. God, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? You can't be an eagle, but have the structure of a buzzard. Eagles and buzzards don't hang together. They don't enter, they're not interrelated. Are you hearing me? So I'm trying to help you tonight. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to, so he's trying to bring the structure to us, even as a race of people. Why do you think? Watch this. Let me help you. What, let, me, let me show you something. Even in all the chaos that's going on, in all the shootings, in all of that stuff, God is trying, he's showing the world how, the, how we have gotten out of structure in, in our governmental operation. It, we, it's, it has, the structure has been against certain people, certain minorities. Are you hearing me? So God is exposing what's not structure to bring this proper structure, watch this, to fit just one group, not just one race, but it will be properly structured for everybody. Oh God, and it's a challenge. So as we're seeing the challenge from that perspective, there's the same challenge that's occurring in our spirit. We don't want to bring that order. We're fighting it. We're fighting it. We're fighting it with tooth and nails. And God said, I got to bring that structure. So now let's walk a little bit. Let's walk a little bit. Let's walk a little bit. Let's look at our uh, revelatory niggas. Our revelatory niggas. Here we are. Let's walk. Let's work. Look at our revelatory niggas. Here it is. Nugget number one. Nugget number one. <laughs> are you ready? Here we go. This is what the Lord gave me. What's your current structure and what is it showing? What's your current structure? And what does your current structure say about you? <laughs> does your structure say, okay, God, I'm ready? Mm, God Almighty. Does your structure, does your current structure say, okay, God, I'm ready for the big thing? <laughs> you, and, you analyze it. You evaluate it. Be honest. Don't play. Listen. Self-deception is the worst deception because we can't fool God. You can't fool God. Be honest with yourself. That's the problem. We're not being honest with ourselves. Here's the honesty to ourselves. What is your current structure showing? What is it saying about you? Is your current structure matching what your current mouth is saying? Oh, God. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. What is your current structure? And what is it manifesting? What is it showing? If your structure had to describe you, what would the description of it be of you? Uh-huh. Structure. Are y'all hearing me? 
Are y'all hearing me? What's your current structure and what is it showing? Now here it is. Now here it is. Here it is. Here's the next. Here's the next rhema about structure. Structure puts in place what's necessary and eliminates what's not necessary. Structure will cause things necessary to be put in its proper place. Structure is going to challenge us to put what's necessary in its proper place. And it also structure will eliminate what's not necessary. Some stuff is not necessary, but we think that is necessary. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when we bring structure in, structure will show you, okay, this is necessary. That is not necessary. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So structure, says the Lord, puts in place, structure manifests. What's necessary and eliminates what's not necessary. Some stuff is not necessary, but you're you are making it. We are making it necessary. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. So structure, the proper structure, the proper structure puts in place what's necessary and eliminates what's not necessary. Hey, here's something else structure does, says the Lord. Structures, uh oh, this is a good one right here. Are you ready? Are you ready? Structure challenges us face to face. We can't look at nobody else. Our structures, structure, structure challenges us face to face. I can't look at no one. Structure makes us look in the mirror and make the necessary evaluations of ourselves. When we start talking about structure and how God is trying to bring that structure into us, the structure that he wants, it's going to challenge us. And some of us, mm, God, uh -huh, some of us can't stand what we see in the mirror. Well, watch this. If you don't like what's in the mirror, change it. <laughs> if you don't like what you see in the mirror, change it. God gave you the power to change it. Are you hearing me? Structure. <laughs> will challenge us, are you hearing me, to face ourselves. A structure makes us look at ourselves. If you don't like what you're seeing in the mirror, change it. Don't be so gung-ho that you're not willing to change what you see that you don't like. Change it. Now watch this. God said, I'm not going to do what you're supposed to do. God Almighty, he just said that. Tell them, I'm not going to do what I gave you the power and the authority to do. He said, I'm not going to change you when I gave you the ability to change you. Some stuff is not in a God's hand. Some stuff is in your hand. God Almighty. Oh God, are y'all hearing me tonight? Mm-hmm. Structure. He's bringing structure. Structure. In the, oh, God, he just dropped this on me. I hear you. I hear you, Holy Ghost. We've become so accustomed to not being structured that that's our structure. God, we've become so comfortable, so comfortable and accustomed to not being structured that that has become our structure. Okay, let me show you how it works. You late to everything. You never on time. You always give excuses, and you you validate your excuses to yourself. God, you make yourself believe that it's it, but it's here. It is the truth is it's nothing but a an excuse. And we tell ourselves we good. I'm good. I'm all right. I'm good. That's self deception. And as long as you're doing this, says the Lord, you're gonna miss it. I'm, we're in revival, people. God said it, it, it involves us. This power, this move, it, it directly involves us. But if we're not honest with ourselves and we keep playing with ourselves, mm, ain't nobody playing with us. We're playing with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody playing. And we can't even blame the devil. It ain't even the devil now. It's not the devil, it's you. Let the devil. Mm -mm. 
you will not bring the necessary correction to yourself. You know, you keep, mm, as long as you keep avoiding it, watch this, the, mm, that level of power, that dimension of power, that place in that dimension, you is going to keep avoiding you. You'll keep missing the place. You'll keep missing that place. And you wonder, why am I missing it? Why do I keep missing it? Why? Because you are avoiding the proper structure necessary for what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. You want God to do it in it? I said, nope, not going to do it that way. You got to bring the structure. Watch this. Oh, God, here's something else that he gave me about structure. Structure makes us accountable. Structure makes us accountable. Structure makes us accountable. Accountable, watch this, number one, to ourself. The greatest deception is self-deception. Structure demands accountability. Number one, to your conscience, to yourself. Structure demands accountability. You know what you're supposed to do. You just avoiding doing it because your flesh tell you you don't want to do it. But you know that's what it's that's why the accountability. You know, it's better for a man to not walk in the way than to walk in the way and not know and and to the, to know the way but not walk therein. Structure makes us accountable. You know what is what you're supposed to do but you refuse me we refuse to do it mm -hmm. and that's where the stubbornness kicks in that's where the pride kicks in that's where the ego kicks in that's where all these other open doors are because we won't bring the structure it requires accountability structure makes us accountable number one to us and, and that's where our countries come in. Our country, yo, uh, man, our country be tearing us up. You know, you know, you know. But you know what we tell our country? Yeah, I know and what. Okay, but I ain't going to do it. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Are you hearing me? Structure, watch this. Uh-oh, this is something he gave me. Oh, y'all ready for this one? My God, today, this is a good one. He said this, I will no longer allow you to operate in the grace of your anointing with no structure. That's a hard one. When he gave me that, I said, whoa. He said, you can no longer be anointed with no structure. God Almighty, you can no longer be anointed with no structure. He said, the days of chaotic anointing is coming to a halt. The day of chaotic anointing Anointing is coming to a halt. He said this, people of God. You can no longer be anointed with no structure. God. Oh, God. When he told me that, I said, God, say it again. He said this. You can no longer be anointed with no structure. I need for y'all to type this in. Structure, 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 structure. See, and see, what I, even right now, because I was praying, I'm always praying about the church. I say, Lord, I'm trying to position that in, even in our personal life, that, that we'll leave an inheritance for our children and our children's children. Even this, he said this. Even, in, see, people think that it's just church. No, he's talking about in everyday life. No longer will you be anointed with out with no structure. Are you hearing me? Structure for our children. Because we're passing the structure level down to our children. 
if we have no structure, we're teaching them how not to have structure. God Almighty, are you hearing me? The structure that we're operating, we're teaching them. So his question, what are you teaching your children? What type of structure are you teaching your children? God, because the structure that we are currently operating in is what we are indirectly, indirectly teaching them. They are learning from us. So what are we teaching them? God Almighty. Oh, structure. Are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? Here's another one. Oh, God. Structure is causing us, a structure will cause us, it, structure is causing us to operate now as if we're already in the future. The proper structure now will cause us to operate now as in we are in the future. See, that's how it works. Let me show you how it works. Here it is. Here it is. The proper structure causes you to operate in the future now. And when you get to the future, that will become the now. And God said, because you got the proper structure, I'll continue. Mm, I'll continue to allow you to operate in the structure of your stuff that's to come. God Almighty. See, that's something. See, that's what we fail to realize. When we operate in the proper structure, God will allow us to operate and to walk as if it already is before it gets here. <laughs> and then he said, so when it gets here, you are already ready for it. You don't have to run and get ready. So that's why we got to bring the structure because with the proper structure, God said, I will allow you to operate in the future now so that when the future becomes now, when it manifests, you already know how to handle it. So then I can start carrying you to your next. You can't get to your, see the problem is we want to wait until it manifests before we start trying to operate. And God said, no, I'm trying to bring the structure now for your later. God Almighty. But see, you keep playing around. You keep playing around and messing around. And God said, mm-mm, because -mm, I can't, you, you cannot walk in what you haven't first inherited or what you haven't first brought the proper structure to walk in. God Almighty. Are you hearing me? Mm-mm. Oh, God. Mm. Help us, God. Help us, Lord. The old self operation, watch this. The old self operation is fighting to exist. Anybody else besides me? You, 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 you're watching. You can literally, you can literally feel your old self trying to hang it on, fighting to hang on. Fighting, I'm fighting to hang on. 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 You're trying to, what's the, 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 the structure trying to kick in, but you feel your old self. And sometimes, watch this, we'll lean back to our old self and start acting like our old self. And then God says, nope, nope, nope. Your old self, your old self operation is fighting to exist. It's fighting hard. You And you got to be honest and real with yourself and identify it. You can't play panic. You can't. As long as you ignore it, it's going to stay prevalent. You can never, never, you can never properly address something until you confront it. The old self, I'm talking about your old self, my old self. It's, constant, it's fighting to exist. And it pops its head up. It pops its head up. It's fighting to exist. The old self is doing everything that it can to stay alive. But you got to kill. I, 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 wish, I wish about uh, 15, 20 people would type this in. Old self got to die. Old self has to die. Die, old man. Die, old self. Die, old mind. All of the, the old self has to die. Type that in. My old self has to die. My old self has to die. It's got to die. It's got to die. My old self got to die. It's got to die. It's got to die. It's got to die. Even when it wants to rise up, God said, I gave you the, the authority to rebuke yourself. When the last time you rebuked yourself? I, uh -uh, I'm not, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> and watch this our old self has caused many of us to get out of order mm -hmm. 
and get out of alignment. Yeah. And God said, tell your old self, okay, you got me then. You got me then. Now I see you. I got to bring it back. Yeah. So here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Now on that, here I got two more, two more uh, uh, remnants. We're going to Logos. Structure, watch this, causes us to look at things differently. When you bring the proper structure, it will cause you to look at things differently. Watch this. I'm going to help somebody. As God is bringing the proper structure back into your life, it calls you to look at what in the world have I gotten myself in? <laughs> that structure. Structure will cause you to look at things differently. Structure will say, whoa, what did I do? What did I? And you got to be real with yourself. You got to be real. That is structure trying to bring you back into structure. It causes us to look at things differently. Whereas before, you know, we're like, I ain't look at it like that. I ain't see it like that. But when the structure comes, you be like, whoa. <sighs> okay. Let me, let me bring this back. Let, let, let me, let me. And you can't be so ashamed to bring it back in line. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. That's your flesh. That's the flesh. It try to tell you, no, just stay right there. You, you good. No, you're not. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. So here it is. Here it is. Last one. Then we're going to go into the house. Last Raymond day that the Lord gave me. Structure positions us for preparation. Structure positions us for preparation. Structure positions for preparation. Are you hearing me? Structure positions for preparation. When structure comes in, it positions us now for the preparation. Okay, God. Now, I'm ready. But if you don't bring the structure, you're not going to be prepared, and you're going to stay. You it'll be it'll be uh, uh 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 you'll be in a place of frustration because you're like Lord, I'm trying to do everything I can and seem like nothing nothing is working because you won't bring the necessary structure. So you, we talked about it. Flow, gonna flow, but it's a flowing, it's gotta have structure. Power, stru anointed, structure. Revival, stru catapult, rapid progress, rapid progression, structure. Notice this. When you shoot an arrow from the quiver, notice the arrow don't be all over the place. The, the arrow don't be all over the place. The arrow goes. Some of us are like this. You all over the place. You all over the place. And we and now the Lord saying, structure positions for preparation. You hear me? Now let's go. Let's go to Logos. You don't believe me? Let's let's go, let's go to Logos. Let's go to Logos. We're talking about structure. Genesis eleven and six. Genesis eleven. And six Genesis chapter 11, verse six. Genesis chapter 11, verse six. And the Lord said, Let me show you how, how powerful structure is. Behold, they are one people, they all they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they can do with because of structure. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Are you seeing this? They're building the Tower of Babel. They are they, they, they got structure. Look at this. Ain't nobody fighting each other. 
Nobody's trying to do their own thing. Everybody know what they're, they're doing, what they're assigned to do. Everybody, and I'm not just talking about uh, 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 in, 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 in church. I'm talking about in everyday life. Everyone is doing what they're supposed to do. And he said this, there are one people. They all have one language. And this is only the beginning. Now, this is God talking. God acknowledges, look how God acknowledges structure. He said, and this is only the beginning of what they can do because of structure. And to them, nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible because of the, because of structure. Structure says this, nothing that you attempt to do will be impossible because you have the right structure. When you have the right structure, nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible. Nothing is impossible. They had the right structure. Look at this. Let's go. Judges chapter 21, verse 25. Let me show you what lack of structure will do. Judges 21 and 25. Now, as I read this, see do you see yourself. In those days... There was no king in Israel. They had no structure. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. When you don't have the proper structure, you do what's right in your own eyes. I don't care what nobody says, I'm going to do what I want to do. Without structure. In those days, there was no king. In other words, there was no authority. There was no structure in Israel. So by there not being the proper structure, by there not being authority, by there not being a king, everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Now, I want you to look at the magnitude of that. In the kingdom of Israel. Now, look at this. Imagine 10 million people doing what they want to do in their own eyes. As long as it's right to me, as long as it feel good to me, that's all that matter. I don't care about nothing to nobody else. As long as it feel good to me, that's it. Imagine the whole city of Atlanta operating like that. Well, today, I think I'm going to run a red light. And then you run into somebody else. And next thing you know, well, why you hit me? Because I felt like I didn't want to stop at no red light. So I did what I wanted to do. Now, who going to stop me? Who bad, who bad enough to stop? And it chaotic. That's how many of our lives is operating. We do what we want to do in our own eyes. Well, today, I think I'm going to go rob a bank and steal money out of your account. Well, who gives up? Because that's what I wanted to do. Now, what if the whole city of Atlanta operated with that operate in that capacity? In those days. There was no authority. There was no king. There was no structure in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Let's stay. Let's go to Proverbs 11 and 1. Proverbs 11 and 1. Here it is. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. God Almighty. No balance, no structure is an abomination to God. <laughs> but a just weight is his delight. It's the word. Proverbs 11 and 1. A false balance. A false balance. A false balance. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. But a just weight is his delight. Now, come on, let's go over to the New Testament. Let's go over to the New Testament. Because we got about 12 minutes. Let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to Acts chapter 13. Let's go to Acts chapter 13. Jump over to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. Let's start at verse 1. We're going to go verse 1 down to verse 4. Verse 1 to verse 4. Look at this. Let's, let's see this. Let me put my eyes on. Now, there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, 
Manion, a member of the court of Herod, the Tetrarch, uh, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. Now, you know what? Let me pause right there because I didn't catch that. He just dropped this on me. Look at the structure. Many people are operating out of order because they're doing what they want to do. They have not been authorized to do what they're doing. That's why I tell you all, be very careful in today. Be very careful. The, the, the structure here was this. The Holy Spirit, the people were led on a fast. And the Holy Spirit says, set apart Barnabas and Saul for the work that they were called to do. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. They didn't just leave and do what they wanted to do. See, that's the problem. Lack of structure causes you even in, 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 in the operation of your gift. Even in the operation uh, uh, of your office, yeah. Even in the operation of your office. If you don't have structure, you can be in the office but with no structure and you can be doing what you want to do in the way you want to and you will mess around and lead a whole lot of folks wrong. Doing what you want to do out of no structure. Just anointed with no, that's why God said, no longer am I going to have anointed without structure. Because so many, it has caused so much detriment. It has caused so much damage. P -p operating without structure. Just do whatever I, I say, whatever I want to say. Uh, see, even as prophets, they, listen, let me tell you something. Everything God reveals to us, that don't mean we tell it. <laughs> but see, to show you the, the lack of structure, you tell everything, oh, the Lord showed me. No, some stuff God don't tell you to keep to yourself. And after he see he can't trust you, then you want to, Lord, I can't flow like I used to. Could it be you violated? You have you have violated your office. You violated your gift. You violated your assignment. Mm -hmm. Lack of structure would cause that to happen. And I see it so often. And, and people just, even I, I've sat back and I watch so many church services. Everybody just chaos doing whatever. Just whatever I feel like I want to do. No, that ain't no structure. <laughs> this is not where uh, uh, God is not the order of confusion when you just, just everybody just, just do whatever is coming to their minds. No structure. This, the, uh, the, the, the anointing operates in structure. It is structure. Uh huh. Every gift operates in its proper course. <laughs> Many people have called damaged and harm because they operated with no structure. You are anointed, but you are operating with no structure and you cause damage. You cause harm. You did more bad than good. Mm -hmm. So he sent them all. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went to Cilicia and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Let's go. Let's stay in Acts. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20 and verse 20. I'm talking about structure. I'm talking about structure. I know, hey, we got the structure. The structure. You can't be a billionaire with no structure. You can't. So the Lord is testing you with a hundred. A hundred dollars. Are you structured with a hundred dollars? Or, uh oh, uh oh, I'm about to hit somebody. I'm about to hit you. I'm about to hit you in your throat and your eyebrows finna come through your eardrum. Here it is. Oh, uh, here it goes. Are you structured enough to stay off Amazon and save your money? Oh, see, why you got to do that? Why you got to do that? Why, why you got to do that? Mm, I, I just, I felt blood right then. Yeah, I need for you to be honest. Just say, ouch. Just type in, ouch. Type it in. Type in, ouch. 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 You ain't, are you structured enough? Because, see, some of y'all just, you don't need to go on Amazon. You need to just remove the app. Okay, got to go. <laughs> some of y'all just need to remove the app. It's, the, it's just too tempting for you. Come on, type it in. Come on, ouch. 
Come on, type in. Ouch. I, yeah. You see, you got to be honest. See, you, see, your lack of structure won't let you be honest. Help, help us, Jesus. Yep. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah, type it in. Ouch. There you go. Ouch. Oh, uh -uh, no, 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 El Sean. No, my God. Just say, ouch. 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 Amazon got you. And the Lord said, you got to have structure. You got to have structure. Okay, watch this. Let me show you how your lack of structure. Think about now. You, you've been to the point where you sat back and like, oh, I wish I hadn't bought that because now I need that money. I need that. I, I need what I spent. I need it. Well, you no, know, you didn't need it. You wanted it. You had not brought the structure in that area. Ouch. Ouch. Let's go. Uh, 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 Acts 20 and 28, because everybody ain't being honest. Y'all playing. Acts 20 and 28. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. He gave that to me. So I, so I want y'all to understand even in ministry, I'm challenging many of you in many areas. I'm challenging you in many areas because what you all don't understand, it is my responsibility. It is your, your pastor that's on here, your pastor. It is your pastor's responsibility. He said this, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. To care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. So it is my responsibility to challenge you with structure. Even me. My bishop challenges me. I'm telling you, I ain't going to tell you no lie. As I challenge you, he challenge, that's the importance of being a man in authority, but under authority. I'm a man, I'm a man in authority, but I'm also a man under authority. So, in other words, uh, I have someone that I'm accountable to. Hmm. Does accountability feel like control to you? Uh-oh. Come on, type it in. Ouch. 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 I got you again. Ouch. Some of y'all look at accountability as someone trying to control you. No. We're just trying to challenge you for better. Ouch. Come on. Uh -uh. Don't, don't play. Type it in. Ouch. Accountability feels like you're losing control. Oh, you just trying to make right home. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. Ain't nobody going to tell me I'm going to do what I want to do, how I want to do it. Uh -uh, I don't care what no, I don't care what overseer say. Come on, type in. Ouch. 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 Ooh. Ouch. Oh, I feel uh, Ouch. Ouch. No. And, and, and that's what lack of structure has done. Lack of structure tells you that. Lack of structure tells you that. And so what happens, so then the devil, the enemy, the, uh, those that's been assigned, those that's been assigned to challenge you in those areas, the enemy will tell you that they are your enemy when that is not the case. They've been assigned to you to bring structure where there is no structure. But the enemy will tell you that's your enemy. He'll make he will make, the enemy will make the one assigned to you to bring the proper structure into your life be the enemy. And you'll start treating those people as, their, as your enemy. Uh-oh. Oh, God. There are some people that God has assigned to you. you. There are some people that have been assigned to you to bring structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. I got, I got two minutes. 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. But all things should be done decently and in order. Structure. All things should be done decently and in order. Structure. Oh, Lord. Y'all are y'all going to do me like that tonight? Y'all ain't going to sow tonight, are you? Yeah, y'all better sow. Yeah, uh, that. I rebuke that demon. <laughs> Watch it. Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. Do not, hear this, do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewal or bring a structure of your, to your mind that by, mm, here it is, catch this. Now, I never call it this part of it, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. That by testing, that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by testing, you may discern. What is the will of God? Okay, once you found that, okay, God, okay, that ain't the will. Okay, this is the will. Okay, sometimes the will of God will contradict your will. I ain't going to be in the, I'm sorry, I, you know, I, I'm, uh, mm -mm. It, it will contradict your will. Mm -hmm. And after you see it, after you, after, after the testing and discerning, Okay, all right, I surrender. Have you surrendered? All right, so we got some, we praise the Lord. We got about a few, a few more scriptures. Uh, let's, let's see the last scriptures. We got about four or five more scriptures. I want to put these, I want y'all to get these, the last uh, couple of scriptures, the last couple of scriptures. Uh, and I thank you all. We've gone over uh, tonight. Uh, Romans, uh, Romans 13 and 1, uh, Romans 13 and 1, write this scripture down. Uh, Romans 13 and 1, Romans 13 and 1, uh, Romans 14 and 1, Romans 14 and 1, um, Romans 14 and 1. Write these scriptures, catch these scriptures, these are the remaining scriptures. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. These scriptures are going to help you concerning structure. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 11 and 12, Ephesians chapter 4, or verse, thank you, thank you, Lady Ben, there you are, those are the remaining scriptures, those are the scriptures, write those scriptures down, get those scriptures, listen, if this word blessed you tonight, I know uh, I'm challenging you, I'm telling you, and I'm going to continue to challenge you, I'm not going to lay off on you, because see, it, see, what you don't understand, me challenging you is not uh, to, to bother you or agitate you, it's just I want the best for you, I see it. I see it. The Lord has allowed me to see it. And I'm trying to challenge you to get there. Well, beloved, if this word bless you tonight, listen, I want you to sow a seed. So don't, 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 don't tighten up on me. Every last one of you all on tonight, I want you to sow a seed. I'm not the less than $20. I want you to sow a seed tonight. I want you to sow a seed. Uh, sow a seed. Uh, our electronic giving, our cash out is dollar sign, new life, I-N-T-L. Dollar sign, New Life INTL. You should see it there on screen. You should see it there on screen. Use our cash app. Sow a seed. Sow a, sow a seed. Sow a structure seed tonight. Stru sow a structure seed tonight. Hey, if you're on here, you're not saved, then you want to be saved. After hearing this, I'm not talking about joining our ministry at this point. I'm talking about your salvation. Just simply, if thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So it's just simple. Lord, I confess. With my mouth. I confess you, Lord Jesus, with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead by God for me. If you did that, you're saved. It doesn't stop there. Listen, you need covering. You need a home. You need a shepherd. You need a pastor. You need someone to challenge you. If God has spoken to you, it's because you may never set foot in our ministry. We have our Life Connect partnership. You can still connect with us. If God has spoken to you and, 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 and you're enjoying this and you know, you know, oversee, I, I need this type of covering. Just type in, I want to connect. Just type it in. I want to connect in the comment. Just type in, I want to connect. And our elder of new members will be in contact with you and we'll welcome you into this place. Listen, come be with us this Sunday at 1015 for our in-person worship. And then we'll be right back on the same Facebook page. At 10.30 for our work, virtual worship. But I'm telling you, it's nothing like the New Life experience. Don't forget to go to Eventbrite and register for the New Life School of Theology. Our spring quarter is June the 4th and 5th. 
make sure to go. It's on Eventbrite. Just type in, uh, go to Eventbrite, Google Eventbrite, E-V-E-N-T-B-R-I-T-E, Bright, Eventbrite, and uh, type in New Life School of Theology, and you will see the information. It's only $25. Invest in yourself. Listen, I appreciate you, beloved, for being on with us tonight. I really do. I love you with my whole heart. Notice, Overseer loves you, and I'm concerned about you. Tune in with us this week, this weekend, this Sunday, because we know a new life. It's not just church. It's an experience. Thank you for tuning in.